Hi guys, it's Kirsty. Today's video is going to be focusing on OCD and guilt for the reason that the feeling of guilt can be, well, tends to be one of the big driving factors kind of fueling OCD, causing us to do compulsions and therefore keeping us in the OCD cycle. But before I go into that, I will ask, please do subscribe by clicking on the subscribe button below in an order to stay up to date with new videos as they're released. And also, I would like to ask um, if there's any videos that you'd like to see in the future, whether from me or anybody else, please do mention that in the comments below. Thank you also for kind comments that you leave. It's, um, yeah, really, really appreciate it. It's really nice for us to see that um you know videos are helping people um that that sort of you know what you went through can be used for good things and also if you do like this video please do click on the like button um just so i can feel good about maybe getting more likes than next videos i would really appreciate that thank you um so moving on to the topic of OCD and guilt. So guilt is a very, very strong emotion. Um, you know, it grabs our attention when it comes up and it sort of, um, it, it, it's there for a reason, you know, the feeling of guilt, it gets our attention. And this is why we tend to get stuck on it, because it is so intense and unpleasant. It makes us panic and any anx anxious thinking starts. So what I want to focus on in this video uh, is how we can kind of change the way that we look at guilt and, you know, maybe start looking at how we can bring the level of that emotion down uh, um, in relation to our OCD themes um, to kind of feelings more of concern or regret rather than guilt because you know we talk about in this on this channel a lot how um, you know it helps us to be able to reduce um, the our compulsions by bringing down our anxiety levels you know um, what, how whatever you know the cognitive model that you're using in order to recover from OCD um, in addition to exposures is bringing down the fear response which helps with the response prevention um, which is obviously a huge um, you know the hugest part of exposure and response prevention um, but when you're extremely terrified of something it's really hard to bring that response down because of the anxious thinking that might be going on um, which can sometimes you know that can cause a rumination mental checking etc which keeps us locked in that OCD cycle after we've reduced or stopped doing physical compulsions um, so we talk about how we can bring levels of anxiety down to um, right feelings of concern which can help to bring down that fear response mentally slow down the thinking process so we have more of a conscious choice over accepting um accepting uncertainty which obviously is a big part of ocd recovery so if we're able to bring the intense emotion of guilt down over our ocd themes to uh, you know feelings of you know a regretfulness or something um the way that we would bring like anxiety down to you know concern uh, um then it helps once again to slow down that kind of mental thinking if we're able to kind of um, you know, whatever our fe feared scenario is, if we're able to, you know, see ourselves as being a fallible human being capable of, of making mistakes and, you know, therefore we're able to better take the risk that it is OCD because that's how it feels to us. It feels like we're taking a risk if we live our life as if it is OCD, OCD rather than uh, living our life as if our feared scenario is real and therefore doing compulsions and avoidances, which then obviously reinforces the cycle. It reinforces the idea that it's all real and true. So living life as if it is OCD feels like a risk to us. But the more we can allow ourselves to think, you know, to look at ourselves um, as a human being who's capable of good and bad acts and not completely write ourselves off um, based on something, the more we buy into that and, 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 and can show ourselves compassion, the better we're able to live life as if it is OCD, therefore on our terms, therefore not avoiding and doing compulsions. So 
you know, you could argue, well, the reason why the feeling of guilt exists is because, um, you know, it can alert us to, uh, you know, behaviours that we may have done, which aren't great for us and others, and therefore maybe don't coincide with what we want out of life. You know, and that's, you know, that's great, because it's it's good to have that kind of level of, you know, something that makes you think, oh, God, did I, okay, let's see if we can do better in the future. But the problem with guilt and OCD is that it kind of, because we, um, obviously, it does vary, you know, dependent on what the thing that you believe you might have done is. Firstly, you know, OCD might might tend to latch on to more extreme things rather than, you know, everyday sort of mistakes that, you know, all of us make every day because we're not perfect. Um, and the re and OCD will lock onto it and just not let us off the hook. It will just keep on going. And what we can find then is that we're thinking if we did do this thing, that means that we're just a bad person, that we're writing ourselves off 100% um, as a human being. And what is useful, firstly, is to change your perspective on that and try and look at things as being less black and white. Um, so uh, this is why when it comes to OCD, uh, um, strong feelings of guilt keep us latched on. So yes, we say, you know, guilt is there for a reason and all of that. But when you have OCD and you, you believe, really believe that you might have done something, um, like, you know, something that goes strongly against your moral codes, that feeling of guilt will keep you consumed and suffering chronically when in actual fact you you don't you know you've got OCD you believe you've done something that you actually maybe haven't done um and but of course this feeling of guilt that keeps on latched on chronically that we feel like we can't let ourselves off the hook is causing us to do compulsions which keeps us continuously suffering so after a certain amount of time of feeling like that it's good to ask yourself you know do i want to continue suffering in this way doing compulsions avoidances uh, on on the one in a million chance that this thing actually is true or if i can work on accepting myself unconditionally having you know positive regard for myself unconditionally then maybe I can allow this one in a million chance to be there and continue living my life on my own terms rather than chronically suffering and feeling like you know having to punish myself because essentially if you're locked on with OCD because of the feeling of guilt that's what it is you know doing compulsions is like punishing yourself really so the idea of unconditional self-acceptance um, can really shift your perspective here it's simply viewing yourself as a human being who has intrinsic worth just for being a human being, regardless of, you know, what, what your actions are, you know, the things that you do, viewing that, you know, you're capable of good and bad acts, you know, it's essentially judging acts and behaviours rather than judging the overall person who has done that. Um, you know, so it's basically seeing, you know, we can all make mistakes in our behaviours, but it doesn't mean that we can't do better in the future and if we can reduce the levels of guilt um then we're better able to focus on our behaviors going forward rather than focus internally on ourselves as a person so it's kind of looking at our behaviors rather than us as a being so if you're not rating your value as a human being um, on on all of your behaviors you're seeing yourself as just being valuable anyway and rating the behaviors more than yourself then you're better able to maybe be a bit less black and white in how you view yourself um, and that can really really help with this and really really help with seeing that you know you're capable of making mistakes everyone can make mistakes from time to time but just because a person makes mistakes it doesn't mean that they can't do better in the future and reducing you know really really intense um, emotions can really help us focus on our behaviors rather than, um, you know, do self-destructive things to avoid feeling emotions such as, you know, that, that essentially affect how we're thinking about things, panic or, you know, when we're in panic stations. So guilt is, if for somebody who suffers from OCD can be something that leads, you know, like the cogs are going, you know, one to the dozen. And then, you know, same as, for any person, rage, feelings of depression and extreme fear and terror. All of those things can lead us to maybe acting out of our own best interests. It might be, you know, drinking loads to stop having to feel these feelings, or it could be like not being able to 
feel the feelings and you know hitting the wall at which you know is no good for the wall it's no good for your your knuckles uh, you know whatever it might be to try and escape these feelings if you can bring those feelings down uh, to a you know still unpleasant feeling emotions then it can help reduce you know how much we feel like we want to try and avoid them um and like i say and better able to focus on our behaviors now, to help me out here um, to, and, and also to keep me on track, I found a really good website that talks about guilt from the perspective of of REBT, which we talk about a lot on this channel, um, Rational Motive Behavioural Therapy, so, which is founded by Albert Ellis. Um, now, whether the cognitive model that you're using to kind of alongside behavioural therapy is REBT or various types of CBT or whatever, the idea of unconditional self-acceptance is, is just very helpful. And also, you know, feelings of, uh, of guilt surrounding whatever the feared thing that you think you might have done. So I'm going to use this website as some guide because I, I read through it and it was really, really useful in the way things are worded. So um, what I want to do is just talk about some of the arguments um, against holding on, you know, holding on to that feeling of guilt rather than allowing it to be sort of feelings of concern or, or, or regret. What I will say here is that that I'm going to preempt your reaction. Um, you might be like, I don't want to feel regret. Oh, no, because that's another thing that sometimes we can fear is feeling, you know, regret um but a big part of you know fe feeling of regret is you could come at this from a mindful approach here and and just um if we're being realistic feelings can't hang around with the level of intensity that they might feel at their worst forever it just doesn't happen that's not how human beings work um and also one thing that you could um you know people may live with um you know some regret about certain things but that doesn't mean uh, that they can't go forward and, and again uh, try to um you know put, do do things with better behaviors or live more in line with how they want to live um you know they can use um whatever they might feel like they regret as their lesson to move forward but the feeling of regret is um, it doesn't cause us to act out of our own in best interests the way the feeling of guilt might. So if we want to look at disputing against feelings of, you know, guilt that we might be feeling to bring down to kind of a more manageable level so that we can sit with those feelings, not get stuck in it and hopefully then move past it, because that's, you know, the whole idea of, um, you know, a big part of OCD recovery is learning to not engage with our obsessions so much and if we can bring the feeling of guilt down to like a, a lower level kind of emotion like concern or regret then we maybe will be able to less it, it reduce our engagement with it and leave it be whereas because it's it's such a strong emotion you know it, it can it it just it, like it, it's hard to leave it alone basically and so I want to read some of these points on this website um to better articulate what I'm trying to say so um so it says um you know guilt is such a unpleasant feeling that you'll do anything to avoid it so that's um that's a kind of really good point there um if we can have a feeling that's a little bit less strong than guilt then we don't have to try and run a million miles to avoid it so much um, feeling guilty about something you did in the past robs you of any pleasure you might otherwise find in the present. Instead of enjoying the moment, you dwell on the, ter the terrible thing that you shouldn't have done. So those are two kind of words that can kind of add to our suffering is the word terrible and the word should. Um, we've got various videos on this channel where we talk about how words such as should and must um, generally are used in our irrational beliefs that can fuel um, some of the the you know, anxiety and things that we might feel around um, our, work, our feared scenarios. So also we've got here, the self-downing that lies at the heart of guilt is also a major cause of depression. By ruminating on what a bad person you are, again, that's another very unhelpful phrase, bad person, as I said, um, you open the door to depression. Once you're depressed, you'll often make yourself more depressed by telling yourself, it's awful to be depressed, I can't stand it. So here you're layering on another... Um, layer of issues there that you're kind of you're downing yourself for feeling depressed and you're feeling depressed because you feel so guilty um the, another point here and I think this is very relevant for OCD sufferers your feelings of guilt lead you to overcompensate for your wrongdoing you become uh, you, you know you can become 
like essentially um, unassertive as you try to prove to everyone, including yourself, that you're not a bad person, that you are in fact a good person. So essentially these points um, kind of, they help to argue basically against, um, you know, the feeling of, of guilt and completely damning yourself because of this thing that you feel like you might have done that you feel like you simply can't accept yourself as a human being about. Um, so these are all part of the things that can help you to so kind of, um, to dispute holding on to that feeling of guilt that keeps you locked on, that you're desperately trying to avoid, desperately doing compulsions to try and rid yourself of that feeling and of course sort of with all things um around you know changing um our irrational beliefs around things um you know you can look at the things holding on to this guilt and this whole like idea of damning yourself for an act that you may or may not have even done you know firstly sort of give yourself you've got to give yourself good reasons to take on you know a new rational belief you know I strongly would prefer that I hadn't done something but I'm a human being and I make mistakes um you know that's the kind of rational belief that we'd want to kind of look at changing it to and uh, what I want to be very clear about here also is that you're not letting your you know you're not not taking responsibility for you know various things you know this is not saying oh if I work on this, it means that I won't care anymore about things or anything like that. It's simply that is not the case. That is completely black and white way of looking at it. And but what what it is 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 basically reducing the self defeating behaviours that we may do uh, because we we are constantly suffering by feeling this feeling of guilt, which we don't actually have to constantly suffer with. We can bring that down uh, to a more manageable feeling so that we don't do self-destructive behaviours such as compulsions, avoidances, um, you know, whatever form that might come in. And, and when I say avoidances, I mean addictive behaviours even that we do to distract ourselves from, you know, these, these feelings of guilt. If we can bring our views down about, um, bring change our beliefs to be more flexible about things. So that feeling of strong guilt and like damn, eternal damnation. And I, like, you feel like you can't even stand it. Bring it down to feelings of regret. It feels more tolerable to you. And therefore you can do behaviours that are more in line with your best interests i.e. working on your OCD recovery and reducing compulsive behaviours and doing things that you want to do in life as well. I will reiterate, it is not essentially working to remove your conscience. It's not going to turn you into a sociopath because you work on unconditional self-acceptance. You're not suddenly going to stop caring how you behave or caring how you treat others. That is not what this is about. And I think it's very important to mention that because that can hold us back. You know, those of us with OCD, you know, we, we can have a tendency to hold very strongly to our morals. And um, But what, what we want to do is, you know, see ourselves as being we people make mistakes um and when it comes to having the extreme fear that you you know um and and, and you're looking at this you're watching this video you're on this channel because you're suspecting you have OCD, but because OCD makes you doubt, you're never sure. So therefore, it's still you're still making yourself suffer because you're having these obsessions. I'm saying working on unconditional self-acceptance can better allow you to bring down the, the anxious thinking so that you're better able to leave the thoughts there, not engage accept uncertainty. The idea of unconditional self-acceptance means showing extreme compassion to yourself. It falls in line with other models um, that people might talk about, like radical acceptance and things like that. It's along the same lines. It's just, you know, things are worded differently. But it's important to say this because it can be taken the wrong way and people can dismiss the idea, you know, we're scared that they're going to become a sociopath when actually, no, it's not black and white. As I say, you don't suddenly stop caring about the things that you care about so that is just very important for me to add because um i mean i i, I you know ocd can can be can latch on to all sorts of things so i hope this video has been helpful for you in terms of talking about the relationship between guilt and ocd and you know, obviously with, with doing compulsions and avoidance behaviours, keeping us locked on um, and talking about some arguments against the feeling of guilt and how you can work on, um, you know, reducing those feelings of guilt in order to help, as I said, engage less with our obsessions um, 
and and be able to sit with the feelings better um and there are other videos on this channel that you can watch which go into greater detail about unconditional self-acceptance because that is a the biggest part of this it's the idea of not writing yourself off as a human being judging behaviors rather than self as a whole um yeah so i recommend looking at those videos and if you want more help with disputing there are other videos on disputing as well or you can look into um, disputing irrational beliefs rebt online and and learn more about that there are worksheets that you can also download or, or get hold of online to make notes to help you do disputing as well so i hope this video has been helpful thank you very much for watching and take care Bye.